Hello, everyone, and welcome. For those who don't know me, my name is Gwendolyn Reese, and I am a pagan priestess of Athena and Apollon, a priestess of Theophania in the Assembly of the Sacred Wheel, a Wiccan organization, but I am also a librarian. And so today I am going to be doing a workshop here for you on how to research your down ballot. So the first thing I want to do is just to thank anyone who is taking their time to watch this because I believe very strongly in our democracy. And at the same time, I recognize that our democratic institutions are in a time of extreme challenge. And as my colleague Catherine Ray says, the best way to heal an ailing democracy is to pay attention and to participate. And so I'm very grateful to you all for spending the time to come here today. So a couple of things that I just want to quickly uh, talk about in terms of why I am focused on the down ballot. Why should we care about the down ballot? Pretty much all of the media coverage and most of our national attention is almost inevitably on the presidential races and sometimes down to say the Senate level. But the reality is that the way in which our government works as a result of federalism, many of the most important issues that we care about are actually decided at a lower level of government. And this is what we are calling the down ballot, those things that are down below the presidential and Senate races, federal Senate races. So for example, if you are someone who cares about the integrity of our democracy, then issues like gerrymandering, in which the politicians choose their voters instead of the voters choosing the politicians, that's actually handled at like the state Senate level, the state legislative level, wherever it is that you are. Similarly, if you are concerned about something like the Electoral College, the Electoral College is in the Constitution, but there is a movement in various state legislatures to create legislation where once a certain number of states pass it, they will bind all of their electoral college votes to whoever wins the national popular vote. So some of these issues are, again, these are at the state legislative issues. Similarly, if you are someone who believes that Black Lives Matter, and I certainly believe that, then if you care about things like policing reform, the, the levels of government that are going to be interacting and negotiating with things like the police unions and so forth, that's going to be at your city council level. That's going to be at your mayor level. And if you care about something like the school to prison pipeline, then you need to be paying attention to your local board of education elections. And so, um, and also for that matter, many, many states, they elect their judges. So all of these are very important issues that affect our lives and the lives of our community very intimately. The other thing that I want to point out in terms of paying attention to these local elections is that the reality is that you have a much, much stronger voice when you call your city council person than when you call your federal representative. So again, this idea of paying attention and participating, we need to vote, but then we also need to be engaged with our local elected leaders. So today what I'm going to be doing is showing you a number of the resources and strategies that I think is most helpful in terms of figuring out some of the <clears throat> issues around various local races and candidates. And I'm gonna be doing this in a way that it should be relevant for anyone in any state. So I'm going to begin here and share my screen. And I'm gonna share here, I'm going over, there we go. So we should be seeing here vote411.org, vote411.org. All right, so this 
is a voter guide that is brought to you by the League of Women Voters. And if I had to choose one, uh, this would probably be it. Um, the other one I might, sh I might choose that I will show you in a minute is actually Ballotpedia, but I love this site. So here's the deal. The League of Women Voters is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization, and their entire mission is to uphold democracy itself. And they have a lot of great information in here. <clears throat> now, if you needed to register to vote, you needed to figure out where your polling place was, you needed to figure out like, where is that ballot drop box that I need to take my absentee ballot to? Um, since I don't want to put it in the mail and I also am concerned about the pandemic so I don't want to stand in line, all that is right here. I also encourage everyone always check your voter registration status because periodically voter rolls are purged and sometimes incorrectly. But for the moment, what we're going to focus on here, since we're interested in the down ballot, is find what's on your ballot. So you're going to be asked to put in your address. And I am going to pretend that I live at Wright Public Library in Dayton, Ohio, which is, uh, that was the public library of my youth. So, we are pretending that I live at Wright Public Library. And when I get here, I'm going to be able to choose the voter guide in one of two languages. I can choose English or I can choose Spanish. So I'm going to say English and I'm going to go to my races. And the first thing I want to point out here is that um, we're not interested in the presidency in this particular instance because we're focused on the down ballot. You can see that we have um, some court. Ohio is one of the places that, not, that uh, elects judges. So we have um, various judges. We also have state senate, state house, and we also have some ballot issues. So I just want to show you, you can see it's a fairly long ballot. Actually, it's quite a long ballot. You've got prosecutors, engineers, sheriffs, all sorts of things that you're going to be voting for if you are living in this part of the world. So at the moment, I just want to show you here, when I click on Ohio State Senate, for example, here I have information about the candidates. I have their phone numbers, their education experience. I have their social media if they have provided it. And one of the things that I absolutely love about Vote 411 is that the league gives questions to all of the candidates. And it's the same questions to all of them. So you can look at their answers. So we have here um, gerrymandering is one of the issues that is on the table and we have their answers. We have a number of questions that are very, very um, reasonable. So the, the league never asks gotcha questions. They're always very reasonable questions. And I can do a comparison between these two. And at the end, depending on who it is that I want, and I'm just going to randomly click, I can select my candidate. And then I can go on, if I like, into the next race, which here would be the second district court of appeals judges. And again, I can take a look and select a candidate. So at any rate, when you get all the way down to the bottom, you'll see here, we also have ballot issues. And these are very, very important. And uh, you've got here the link to it, or sometimes it will give you the actual ballot measure. And, you know, again, you just want to choose them. So by the end of all of this, I'm going to just kind of zoom through so you don't have to watch me because there's, there's 22 pages. I really strongly suggest that you read all of these and that you actually take the moment to mark them. And the reason why is that, you know, this can be a very kind of confusing thing 
when you get in there. Often people will have names that are kind of similar and you want to have everything written down because by the end of this, if I were doing this for real, um, let's see, it is not allowing me to, there's um, at the end, ah, okay, I'm gonna view my races, there's a thing where it says to, to finish, but it doesn't like this because I put in a fake address, I think. <laughs> but when it says finish, then you can print your, um, there we go, finish. That's what I was looking for, sorry. Um, from here, you can have it sent to yourself like by text, you can email it to yourself, you can print it, and it will give you your list of everything that you had chosen, which is incredibly helpful. And then that way, if you go to the polls in person, you don't take as long in there, which is very important just first of all, from the perspective immediately of being in a pandemic, but secondly, from the perspective of like the lines are long and we know that we have fewer poll workers than normal, so you can be very efficient. The other thing, of course, is that if you have the ability to go for early voting, that is a preferable option. It is preferable to vote as early as you can. So, like I said, Vote411 is my go-to favorite guide. Now, at the same time though, it is a good idea to look for other guides, to look for other voter guides. And just to go up here for a lot of that, I use Google. Google as a search engine is quite powerful. So a couple of tricks to search in Google to make you search it more effectively. Voter guide. In quotation marks, that looks the word voter up next to the word guide, keeps it as a phrase. And that's a Boolean operator, make sure that you have voter guide and whatever comes next. Ohio and uh, judges, let's say. All right. So from here, in this particular instance, um, I want to point out that we do have quite a number of voter guides that come up, and you can go take a look at them and see who, who and what they are. Now, one of the things that I will always suggest is that you want to know something about them. Like this one, the Ohio Christian Voter Guide, the nice thing about that is it makes it really clear in the title kind of what their orientation is. Sometimes it's not as obvious. Um, another thing that I might actually want to do since we're looking at judge races is I might want to see the Bar Association um, and Ohio um, and take a look at uh, their judge ratings. Almost all bar associations are going to do this, local bar associations. So here, um, we have the Ohio Bar, and of course this is going to be uh, nonpartisan, non and it's made up of lawyers. And when I come into this, I can find out more about the specifics of how this is done. And I can look here about, you know, what is their scores and how does that work? Now, the other thing I want to point out for Ohio is often, you know, read all of it because you'll often find here, oh, look, you know, so that's the Ohio Supreme Court. But there's this other organization here that the Bar Association works with, uh, Judicial Votes Count, and that's going to get us into the more local recommendations. So in this case, when I get here, I'm probably going to say, okay, I want to know my candidates because that's really what I want to do. And I'm going to go to the county in the case that I am pretending that I still live where I grew up because I now live in Washington, D.C. and we don't have um, full voting representation. So, you know, when I go down here, I can see these are all of the various um, justices and I can find out more about them from the viewpoint of the Bar Association. Okay. So, like I said, I, I advise you to look for other voter guides if you are voting for judges. One of them probably ought to be whatever your state Bar Association is. Um, but, you know, you can also look for things 
that are relevant for those areas that speak to your values. So for instance, if I was interested and it was important to me to uh, be thinking about judges who care about LGBTQIA rights, and it is, then I might go look to see whether or not one of the major advocacy organizations like GLAD or somebody has um, the Ohio chapter, maybe it has put out some recommendations and I would be looking at those. Now, okay, so those are voter guides. I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment so that I can flip over to a different site because now what I want to do is I want to show you um, another site that I find particularly excellent and that is Ballotpedia. So I'm going to go back to sharing my screen here. Ballotpedia is all one word, B-A-L-L-O-T-P-E. DIA.org. And so it's a nonprofit organization um, or an organization, hence the org, as opposed to like a company. So the first thing, again, that I would do whenever I am encountering something and I don't know anything about the source is I'm always interested in looking for something that should be fairly easy to find. And if it's not, then that makes me suspicious that basically says about. And because so I want to know something about like, what is the source? What is its deal? What is the angle it's coming from? And it doesn't, you know, just because something's coming from an agenda, like I said, you know, if I didn't know, uh, like the, um, like GLAD or, you know, the National Organization for Women or something like that, that doesn't mean that having, having a viewpoint is not a bad thing. You just always want to know what that viewpoint is. So in this case, um, one of the things that I do like about Ballotpedia, much like the League of Women Voters, is that they embrace neutrality and are nonpartisan. Okay, so they say that right here and they give a whole bunch of information and some of what else they tell you is um, who they're funded by. And I find that to be important. So here their sponsorship is by the Lucy Burns Institute. So if I click on that, because if I wanna know more about like, okay, so what is the Lucy Burns Institute? Here's a whole bunch of information about them. And uh, it also, which I like quite a bit, gives me their annual reports and it gives me where their funding comes from and who their um, governance board is comprised of. So, and I, I just wanna point out here that they also give links over to uh, the Lucy Burns Institute for GuideStar and Charity Navigator, which are two of the most powerful tools for understanding the finances of various nonprofits. So I am very grateful that they provide all of this information. And I can say personally, uh, having gone through this, I do believe, even though they have ads, this one does have ads, uh, that they are appropriately nonpartisan and neutral. And um, I think they are a reputable source. So we have lots of different things here. I'm just gonna go back to the front page that I really encourage you to look around in because there's fascinating information. But for this point, for the down ballot, I wanna go back over here to where it says what's on your ballot, much like it says on the League of Women Voters. And here again, if I were to put this in, it's gonna load up my sample ballot tool. It's going to ask me again for my address. And I am again pretending that I live at the public library. And it does say, okay, do you need to know how to vote in Ohio? And again, much like the League of Women Voters, it's gonna take you to all the information that you need if I, was not already, if I was not already registered or needed any help with like getting a ballot. But in this case, I am going to go here and say, I am interested in the November 3rd election. And then it's gonna load up my ballot. All right. Again, we're going to skip the president because we are looking further down the ballot and we see that we do have one congressional office that is running here and then there are a number of statewide offices as well. And so I want to show you um, again. So, you know, you saw in the League of Women Voters 
they give the information the candidate provides and they answer questions the same uh, you know the same questions are presented in this case I want to show you a little bit it's got some additional sorts of things but it doesn't have as many of the offices it doesn't have everything that the league has so I would go to both all right so here is one of those judge candidates all right so here she is and it tells me information about her. It takes me over to her campaign, to her um, social media, her education, her career. And then this is about the various um, elections. It gives you here some of her campaign finance information. And this does this for all of the different levels. And I find this to be quite valuable. So I can see here who is giving her money. And that tells me something about her as a candidate. I can also see that there are endorsements. And in this case, we have a number of um, you know, professional associations and businesses. We also have the Ohio Right to Life. We have um, the Buckeye Firearms Association, the Ohio Fraternal Order, the police, the bail agents, that kind of thing. So the fact that they are endorsing her, that tells me something about her as a candidate and depending upon whether or not the values of the organizations that are endorsing her either align with mine or in opposition to mine might affect how I think about and how I understand what kind of position she is likely to be upholding and that would affect my vote. So I do want to point out here that there are options. Um, you know, candidates are given the option for filling out this connection survey, which is kind of a similar idea to the questions that are sent out by the league. Okay, now, so I can look at her and then I can go look at her opposition, Jennifer Brunner. So I see here, um, more information, same kind of thing about Jennifer Brunner. I've got her biography. I've got, you know, her education, her career. Um, I note that she was the Secretary of State for a number of years for the state of Ohio. Uh, as I go down here, and this part is different, she has decided to submit information to Ballotpedia. So I can tell a little bit more that she has submitted, such as her key messages for her campaign are right there. She has submitted those. Um, here is her campaign finance. So again, I can go in and take a look and see, you know, who is giving her money. And we also have here, she has filled out the uh, candidate connection survey information. So now I want to go back again because I want to show you one that this gives you something that is for legislative officials. So we've been looking at a couple of judges here. And this is very specific to, uh, you know, they have to have served in office of the incumbents. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to choose Mr. Naraj Antani, who is currently the incumbent for the state senate. And you can see here, information about him again some of the same sorts of things but the things that are a little different because he is an incumbent in the legislature you can see uh you know his committees what are the committees that he serves on and you know um basically any of those if i want more information i can click on that that tells me something about his work and very importantly, I think you can see what bills he's actually sponsoring. So I can see whether or not the kinds of bills that he has sponsored as an incumbent are in accord with what I want my elected representative to be doing. You can also go in through bill track and, and look to see like their votes and so forth. But I think that that is an important thing that is here. And again, like I said, you have, you know, the, um, the people that are funding and the organizations that are funding the candidate. Okay, so, and you can see if there's themes and so forth, but the, the parts that are different for the legislature is that you can see the committees, 
all the way down as, as this is a this is state senate um you know you can see that and the and then the bills that they have um sponsored and of course there's quite a bit of information out there on some on um, some of these people and not as much on others. The other thing I do want to mention actually when it comes to looking at that campaign finance for um, people that are incumbents, incumbents no matter which party they're in pretty much always receive more money from kind of your local businesses than challengers and that's just something to kind of keep in mind as um, a frame. So that is a normal situation no matter which party. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to talk about newspapers. How do you find your local newspapers? Because local newspapers, again, can be a tremendously powerful source of information And I do also want to say here that um, one of the things that is a, a different challenge in our democracy at the moment, many small newspapers no longer have full editorial independence, just like many local news stations, especially since Sinclair Broadcasting has taken over so many, don't necessarily have editorial independence. And what that means is that some of them have stopped doing endorsements, which is too bad in a lot of ways, because there was a time, and there are still some newspapers who do this and do a good job of it, in which those people who uh, were working for the newspaper tended and who were really following in-depth various issues, the editorial staff would come together and they would do an assessment of what they believed was in the best interest of the public. And those could be pretty revealing because they also usually would tell you why they were endorsing this candidate over that candidate. So you can still find some of those. Some newspapers still do them, but just to let you know that there are an increasing number of small newspapers that are not. And that has been kind of their answer to not having full editorial independence anymore. So I'm gonna go again over and share my screen. And to be honest, the way in which I find newspapers is I go to Wikipedia and I look for the list of newspapers in the United States. So if you type into Wikipedia in quotation marks, list of newspapers in the United States, you will get this page. And I can go through here and look down. And what I'm really interested in here is papers by state and territory. Okay. Now I, I have been using where I grew up, the town in which I grew up, as an example for most of these things, because I actually live in Washington DC right now in the District of Columbia, and we don't have uh, voting representatives in Congress, and you know we don't have a voice in, in federal government. So the weird situation of DC makes it not always as good an example to show for people that are outside of DC. But in this case, I do want to show you um, DC, because if you live in a big enough area, if you live in a big enough city like we do, then not only do you have like your major newspaper, in this case, that would be the Washington Post. There's also the Washington Times, but really the Washington Post is our major newspaper. There's also frequently um, like an independent paper. In this case for us, it's the Washington City paper. And I can go into both of these and, you know, I can search for things like the name of a candidate. I can search for, um, you know, 2020 election endorsement. But I also want to point out here that we have a number, if you live in a big enough area, there's special interest newspapers. And so, again, you know, I mentioned before, like LGBTQIA rights are very important to me as an ally. And so if I wanted to find out what was going on, I could go here into the Washington Blade. And that is the local newspaper that focuses on that particular um, population and issues. And I could search again to see, are they doing endorsements? Um, how is their coverage of any of these candidates? Is there anything there I should know about? Similarly, you know, if I was very, um, I, and I am, 
uh, I wish to be a good ally of Black, Indigenous, people of color, then I can go into some of these newspapers and look for their endorsements. Now I'm going to say, um, this is a little bit of a challenging thing to, to bring up, but I always look at these as one aspect because there are times in which, um, as someone who is, as I had mentioned in the beginning, a pagan priestess and therefore a priestess of a non-Abrahamic minority, what I can tell you is that um, some communities of color are quite socially conservative. And so when they uh, endorse someone, sometimes those are people who maybe are, I'm going to have some pretty serious concerns with the people they endorsed on some of these other issues. Similarly though, I'm always interested in looking for like, you know, if someone is endorsed by um, the blade, but then when I go look and I find out, well, you know, they're really, really good on the rights for LGBTQIA group, but not too good on racial justice, then that will also make a difference in my uh, apprehension. So I just want to point that out. But this is a great thing if you live in an area that has a big enough base to have these kinds of specialized newspapers. Um, for a lot of them, though, they don't. Uh, you know, here, for instance, going back into Ohio, when I'm looking at Dayton, the Dayton Daily News is your big one, and that's the one that is still um, running. So that's your big one. But I do want to point out when you are looking at a state in some of these smaller areas, it is also a good idea to look at the major newspaper in what is either the capital and or the largest city. So in this case, um, if I were to go into Columbus, the Columbus Dispatch often has good coverage of various candidates and elections in ways um, in, in other areas of Ohio. And I would be taking a look at that also. So I do recommend taking a look at newspapers. All right. So I wanna go a little bit more into some campaign finance situation. And as I said, you know, Ballotpedia gives you some interesting and good information on a lot of those local races and candidates. And that's probably about the best source for some of that type of material. Opensecrets.org only covers federal races and candidates, but I find it to be really valuable. So I want to show you kind of what's in here. So OpenSecrets.org is brought to us by the Center for Responsive Politics. And this organization, their entire kind of agenda is trying to track and understand the way in which money is involved in our politics, how it relates to lobbying, how it relates to the um, the rotation between being appointed into a government position and then becoming a lobbyist. So, you know, the, the influence of dark money, um, PACs, super PACs, all this sort of thing. So there's a lot of amazing information in here that I, in, I encourage you to take a look at. And you will see there is a ton of information in here about the money and how it relates to presidential races. But at the moment, because we are focused on the down ballot, I'm going to go here to menu and I'm going to go to congressional elections. Okay. And so again, I am pretending that I still live in Ohio. So I'm going to choose my state. Come on. <sighs> Having some mousing difficulties. There we go, Ohio. All right, so when I choose one of these, the first thing I kind of like to do is just, you know, do a little bit of kind of looking around and getting some level set. And one of the first things I want to do is like, is there anything in here that looks like it's way out of whack? And the answer is yes. And that is this one, Ohio District 4. I mean, this has got way more money flowing in here than any of the others. So what is the deal with Ohio District 4? So 
When I go in here, I discover Ohio District 4, almost all of this is coming in and it's about Jim Jordan, who is one of President Trump's great defenders. So that's the deal there. Um, and so it is way out of whack, way out of whack. And I would be looking pretty carefully at that one, but I'm gonna show you a different one just to give you a little bit better sense of some of the stuff. So I'm interested in Ohio District 1. It also has more money than most of these. So like what's going on with Ohio District 1? All right, so when I get in here, I'm just gonna point out some of the things that I notice. So you have um, Steve Shabbat is our incumbent, and then we have a challenger, Kate Schroeder. And one of the first things that I notice is that, you know, um, the incumbent does have more money, but there's actually, uh, they're, they're not as far off each other as you might expect, because one of the things, and this is a challenge in our democracy, in general, the incumbents almost always have way more money than anybody who is challenging them. Um, and again, there is that thing where like local businesses um, tend to give more money to the incumbent. So, you know, we have a situation in which it is rare for somebody to get voted out of office. And that's actually kind of a challenge as far as like the health of our democracy. But, and that's either, either side, you know, you can say like when you have people in that don't tend to get voted out where there's not, you know, turnover, that can be a real problem because you have the self-perpetuation thing going on. Okay, so I wanna point out they're pretty, pretty evenly matched. So if I were in district one, one of the first things that I would wanna know is um, how much of this is coming in from outside? You know, what is the outside spending? How much of the money are these candidates receiving from people and organizations for whom, you know, they, they don't have any um, responsibility? You know, it's like versus those people who they are supposed to be representing. What is this balance here and where is it coming from? And one of the first things that I see is that they both are getting a tremendous amount of outside money and almost all of it is going into oppositional ads. So this tells me I'm looking at a battleground. I'm looking at a battleground race and that's what's going on here. And it's got a lot of outside attention, a lot of outside money flowing in because I would assume from this, not actually knowing that much about this particular race is that um, you have a, a um, incumbent that is capable perhaps of having that flip so lots of outside money okay so then the other thing i'd want to know is like well all right well who's spending this outside money i'm going to go over here and i'm just going to go ahead and sort um so that i get the the top spenders at the top and some of them are not surprising. I mean, you know, you have your um, party organs spending a lot of money. You also have some things like Women Vote. Um, women Vote is an organization that's about getting women elected to office. And you have a number of other groups here. Now, if I didn't know one of them, like let's say I don't know what the Club for Growth is, and Club for Growth is in here a couple of different times. So, you know, and you can see it's like, here's the NRA is for the Republican and the Sierra Club is for, you know, the um, challenger. So there's stuff like that. But if I didn't know what, say, Club for Growth was, I could just go over into Google, look for Club for Growth. And here I'm going to get their organization and I'm also going to get like their Wikipedia article um, and I can look at these things and I can get some sort of understanding about kind of what is their agenda and how does that align with uh, my values? Because if I were in this particular location, I'd be like, all right, so this this candidate is, is beholden quite a bit to Club for Growth. And, you know, is that something where I feel as though I, as a constituent, um, you know, who may or may not agree with that, how does that line up with my voice in these situations? So that's, of course, part of why you have OpenSecrets.org, is to try to bring attention to these things. Now, I'm going to go over here to candidates. Because I also just want to take a look at kind of their general funding uh, situation. So one of the things that I find, there's a number of things that 
jump out at me about this. So I have here um, the contributions of $200 or less. So these are the people that are giving, you know, the $200 or less, they tend to be more often kind of the, um, the regular people that they're supposed to be representing. That's 7.04%. Large individual contributions are frequently the largest category, and then you have the PAC contributions, and that's 38.23% for the incumbent. And so I just want to see how that measures up. Here, your challenger, you have a much higher percentage um, is coming from small contributions and a much, much lower percentage coming from PAC contributions, which is some of that dark money situation. Okay. So that also tells me some things. When I look at the contributors. Okay, so here we go, and we've got them for both groups, you know. Um, so just to kind of show you what this does, uh, it gives you here who are their big contributors. And for any of them, if I was interested, I could just click on the organization. And it's going to tell me a number of things here. It's going to say, okay, well, this is how much they're spending. This is how much they spent on lobbying generally. Um, and here are the people to whom they are giving money. And you can kind of see the amounts. So lots to Rob Portman, who is um, the Republican senator. And the other thing here is I can see kind of the totals. That's going to tell me like, okay, where is their money really flowing and by party. So you can see that they give a lot more money to Republicans. Um, and some of their uh, source for their funds and you can kind of see some of that. All right there, which is also kind of interesting because again, my, my point here is trying to figure out to whom is the person I am considering voting for beholden and what is their agenda. And so as far as this one goes, I can also go over here to lobbying. And this is going to tell me about their lobbying and how much they do and like on what. And so I can get more information about that and get again some kind of understanding about um, what they're lobbying for. And like I said, maybe that lobbying is stuff that I would be like, yes, I really would want someone to be doing that. And maybe it's like, hey, this is not the kind of thing that, you know, I want the person who's supposed to be representing me to be involved with. So, you know, again, Open Secrets is uh, quite, it's quite a powerful tool, but it is only for the federal. For the local, um, that would be some of that information in Ballotpedia is one of your better sources for that information. Okay. So, opensecrets.org for campaign finance. A couple of other things that I want to show you. All right. If you are looking at um, your federal races, I'm going to recommend that you go to www.congress.gov. And here we are, congress.gov. And from here, you can find out um, for your incumbent what it is that they're up to if you don't know. So I'm gonna put in here again, where um, seventeen seventy six Far Hills, the public library. All right. And I put that in. It's gonna say, all right. Well, here here are your representatives. Since we're focused on the down ballot, I'm gonna go here to Representative uh, Mike Turner. And when I click on him, I am going to see there's the link into his um, particular web page. But what I really want to do is I want to show you, um, you know, you've got like the ability to see 
his remarks that he has uh, linked in on the congressional record. So like, what has he officially said? Um, I can look at his assignments and his recent votes to see what it is that he is doing. I can look here and look at his sponsored and co-sponsored legislation. And is this the sort of situation that I want to be supporting or not? Um, you know, so I can look at all of these different areas. And like I said, I can look at his votes and I can look at how well what he is doing is in alignment with what I expect as the person who is representing me. So that works for any of the members of Congress. And I strongly suggest that you look at it. And I believe there's also, by the way, ways to set up alerts and so forth um, so that you can be getting in touch with them because we should be getting in touch with our elected representatives. So like I said, voting is one thing but the way to heal an ailing democracy is to pay attention and to participate. The next one that I want to show you is how to do the same thing on state legislative sites. So the place that has done a fabulous job of linking together all of the state legislative sites is the Library of Congress. And so, again, if you go here, Congress, www.congress.gov, so same thing here, slash state hyphen legislature, not plural, just one, state hyphen legislature hyphen websites or you can look for congress.gov state legislator legislature websites like put that in quotes and then i'll make google look at all up at once and you should get to the site okay so here we have links in to all of the different state legislatures here i'm going to go to ohio again so i'm just using ohio as my example and it takes me to the website and from here i should be able to find something that's going to take me to directories and or I could do the who represents me and I can get to my people. Putting that in. Yep. And here it's gonna tell me who is currently representing me in these different areas. Um, okay. So any of these that I'm interested in, I can click on them and it gives me their information, but I can also go back I do want to show you, um, there was a different way that I did this earlier. Okay. I can do it by their name if I know who I'm looking for. Yeah, I guess that is, that is what I did before. Okay, so the Senate map. All right. That's interesting. I wonder if my parents actually, I was doing this honestly earlier on my parents, which is they do not live at the uh, public library. <laughs> and they had, um, there was something a little bit different on one of them. So maybe it's just a tiny bit different. So anyway, let's say that I wanted to see who, I wanted to understand something about Jim Butler, like who, what's his deal? There's my Senate district. I click on him and I get his stuff. It tells me his committees and it should tell me here's legislation proposed. I should be able to track in here and see, there we go. Um, where was he the primary sponsor? When, when was it a co-sponsor? And I should basically be able to find out a whole bunch of information about all of this resolutions and so forth. Okay. So that is how you go about finding your state legislature. And like I said, it's, you may have to look around a little bit, but there will always be something where you can get to the actual legislators and you're looking for like that part, where is there, um, you know, 
what have they co-sponsored? That's usually, or what have they sponsored? What have they co-sponsored? That's usually a huge indicator. And you can also typically find their votes. And you know, what, what are their committees and what have they been doing on those committees? And so I'm gonna show you one more thing. Let's see if I can remember. Um, search. Make sure I did this right. I believe that's it. No. Oh, I can't believe I'm forgetting. That's it. Search.usa.gov. Search.usa.gov. So um, this is the website. So search.usa.gov. This is the website that will search all government websites um, simultaneously. So all .gov and .mil. And you know, the United States is a huge, huge producer of all sorts of knowledge. Um, you know, it's the largest statistics collecting agency in the world. And there are tons and tons of reports and papers and research that are produced by our government on a lot of different things. So I do just want to point out that this is here. There's an entire section for uh, voting in elections, uh, common voting terms, all sorts of different things here that is just incredibly valuable. Um, but you know, you can look here, school board elections. I mean, you know, if you wanted to do something like that, and you can see, um, maybe you want to say, and um, Ohio. And that's going to give you a bunch of different information that is coming directly from one of the government websites. So that's the other thing that I, I would like to show you. So overall, those are, I think, the things that I have to share. I hope this has been useful. And again, I thank you so much for being an engaged citizen. Thank you.